Thanks for your time. A bit of a kerfuffle yesterday in relation to Chung Lei. Uh, my colleague Andrew Clennell reporting that the opposition did raise it with the Chinese Premier. Can you confirm that you did express your concerns there? Uh, Kieran, I think as anybody would expect, Peter Dutton and I in those sorts of meetings uh, say what we would say in public, also reinforce those messages in private. Uh, and we have been very clear uh, that what happened yesterday was unacceptable. It shouldn't have occurred. Uh, ultimately, this visit is taking place in Australia. This was occurring in our Parliament House uh, and in our country there is respect for the freedom of the media. Uh, Chung Lei is a respected Australian journalist. She should have been treated as such uh, and the behaviour was inappropriate. The former Home Affairs Secretary, Mike Pizzullo, says that those Australian officials who tried to intervene, that they should get a public service medal on the spot. Do you, do you agree? I thought they, they acted very, um, well, with great judgment to try and defuse that situation. Look, I do think those officials deserve credit for handling the situation as best as they could in the circumstances. Uh, it's a marked contrast to how the Prime Minister conducted himself, if I can say. Now, the awarding of Australian honours, I'll leave to, uh, to others, uh, but I think credit to the officials who sought uh, in a calm way, but in a firm way as well, uh, to ensure that Australian standards were upheld. Discredit uh, to Prime Minister Albanese and his office for somehow fudging that he didn't know uh, or not having him properly briefed or whatever mess was occurring in the Prime Minister's office or head at the time he came out some two hours later and was incapable uh, of being clear about this. Uh, and ultimately, I do hope that Chinese officials can reflect upon uh, the fact that this was very counterproductive. Ultimately, we're now having conversations about this sort of conduct uh, rather than conversations about the positive advances that can be made and have been made from a visit like this, the difficult issues that have been addressed and hopefully progress that can be made on them. Uh, and this is where we should all want the focus to be. Uh, and it's disappointing that this conduct by Chinese officials that shouldn't have occurred uh, has detracted otherwise from uh, a visit that is important uh, and does provide opportunity for our two countries to make the type of progress that we would all wish. And in relation to the meeting that Mr yeah. Dutton and I had yesterday with Premier Lee, you know, it was a positive meeting, dealt with some very difficult issues, as people would expect, uh, put our concerns frankly and firmly on the table, but also expressed positive aspirations in a mutual way between both sides about how we wish to see the relationship between Australia and China uh, evolve in the years ahead. Do you, do you think that that has seen a reset now for the coalition when it comes to China? We've seen Australia have its reset. Has the coalition done it now? Uh, I think we have had a series of, uh, of important meetings. Uh, we met with uh, a visiting uh, Chinese party minister. We've met with the foreign minister. We've now met with Premier Li. Uh, and these have all been very welcome. And I do thank uh, the Chinese officials for the opportunity of those, uh, those engagements and discussions. Uh, and yes, they demonstrate that uh, we certainly are committed uh, to having as positive a relationship as possible. Uh, but we don't do so with any type of lack of clarity about the strategic challenges faced in the world. Uh, we would wish to see China play a positive role in relation uh, to trying to stop those who initiate war or conflict like Russia or provoke terrorist attacks like Iran. We'd wish to see China play a more responsible role in the way its military conducts itself in our region and show respect for the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea and the territorial and sovereignty rights of countries like the Philippines. Uh, we, of course, uh, don't wish to see cyber attacks or foreign interference and we uh, wish to see respect and upholding of the trade agreements between our countries uh, and have expressed a particular concern and wishes to see real compassion shown to an Australian mm. like uh, Dr Young Hen Jun uh, and wish to see him given the medical treatment and opportunity to ultimately be reunited with his family and urge them to, to show that compassion and consideration there. Now, on, on another matter, I want to ask you comments made by the Nationals leader 
in terms of large-scale renewables. He uh, he has said over the last 24 hours various comments, but including uh, we would like to look for whatever option we can so we don't have to pursue large-scale renewables full stop. Do you agree with him? Well, Kieran, uh, my view is that to, uh, to achieve net zero uh, by 2050 and to do so in accordance with the Paris Agreement to take the steps necessary, uh, it's important that we take and that Australia takes a technology neutral approach. Uh, that is why we've been having the serious and hard discussions about nuclear energy, uh, and these are hard discussions, uh, but clearly renewables, including large scale renewables, are part of a technology neutral approach and projects should be judged on the way in which they contribute to the lowest possible end user price, to reliability, and of course each individual project to the social licence within the communities uh, that it is going to be built in. And they're really the, the key criteria that need to be assessed to make sure that so we can achieve So is there a place achieve for large scale renewables? There is absolutely a place for large scale renewables as part of a technology neutral approach in Australia. Uh, it's an important part of the mix that will help us to reduce our emissions over time. Uh, and we've need, got to be clear that there will be difficult discussions and decisions on that journey uh, to net zero. Uh, we've been having them in relation to nuclear energy. The Albanese government has stuck its head in the sand in relation to the role that nuclear energy is playing in essentially the energy transition or planned energy transition of every other G20 country except Australia. Uh, we're willing to have uh, this difficult discussion and we've got to realise that mm. it will be a difficult one in a whole range of spheres. Those criteria, yeah. lowest end user cost, which means you're considering the transmission implications and all of the other factors that are important. Uh, of course, the reliability equation, which is why nuclear is so important to ensure we have an industrial base and footprint in the future. Uh, and those social licence aspects, which matter for any and all of the different energy generation sources okay. and transmission projects you're talking about. Yeah, indeed. Well, Simon Birmingham, thanks for your time.